start on some gimbal and base on the very bottom. Today, yesterday as well, with some of those, we assembled all the summer fleet today. Well, 63B on the very bottom. It's two dots. Right? 63B, the non 63B. Yeah. 63B, right there, right there. You got it. Thank God there's a obstacle with a brave lion. Otherwise, it'd be spent three hours locating it. Okay. Now we have we have a principal that something comes to say you're off it. He needs to work again. You want to get him? He's probably a whole speaker on the phone. Yeah. Okay. So we normally have a question. Something comes to say you're off it. One, let's say we spoke about a case. You're going through a field, and there's a grave somewhere in the field, and you're not sure if you passed over the grave or not. So if it's considered not a public area, so although a person has a presumed status, that what that you tore, you tell me. So what about if you have a situation, you have, we had a case earlier, you have a mess, you have a, a gazayus of a mess floating on water, and you went into, into the mikveh, and there's a question whether the, the floating source of connect touched you or not. You, are you tummy or not tummy? Right? So we'll discuss this. You tummy. You tummy. That's called subtum shusayochi. What about if you have a situation, you have a sheritz, sheritz is also tummy. Dead rodent. Or do we say a sheretz, when the Torah speaks, it says, when we quote a Pusik, if you find the sheretz, it has to be stationary. The only time regarding a sheretz, it has to be on the ground. But if it's on the water, if it's floating, <laughs> if it's floating, then th this principle doesn't apply to it. Because it says it has to be, it's a regular suffix. So did you touch this? You go at the chazoka. Okay, well, that's what we'll discuss now. So for Edomatama, Linyan sheretz. If, if it's a kazayas of a corpse floating, and did you touch the flesh of a corpse, then you tell me. If it's a shusay yochi, but if it's a gazai, if it's a, if a sheretz is even a dasha, even as much as a lentil, a small piece, you tore. The tanya, sovi tumat sova bein bekele bein bekarka torah. If you have tumah which is floating, whether it's in a vessel or in the karka, in the ground, right, floating on water, and this question, did you come in contact? Did you not? You tore. Rib Shimel be Kalim Tamea. If it's in a vessel, tell me, let's say there's a question. You find a piece of sheretz floating in the middle of a vessel. And there's a question that it touched the side of the vessel. The only thing that contaminates a vessel is what? It has to be a re it has to be a avatuma. Yeah. If a original tum doesn't contaminate a vessel, correct? So now that you find the middle, the question is, did this source of contamination touch the clay? If it touched the side, it's tummy. It's a suffix. The clay, it's a regular clay. Every kli inside its tummy. You can only float on the inside. You can't float mm -hmm. on the outside. Right? So it's floating inside the vessel. So the aloch is. So the Tanakhama says, Bein bekelim bein karkator. Rav Shimon differentiates. Bekelim tameyo. If it's in a kli, even if it's floating, it's a problem. The karka, if it's on the ground, let's say it's floating on, on what's it called? It? It's floating on in, 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 in the river, in a lake. Mm -hmm. And the, did you touch it? Did you not touch it? Torah, then you tore. My time in Tanaka. Tanaka says it doesn't make a difference whether it's the Kli or it's on the ground, meaning on a well, in a well, or in a lake or river. It's tore. He doesn't differentiate, right? Tanaka said, Omrev Yitzub Rav Gimi Ksiv says in the Posuk, Chol Asheretz Ashoreis, it says, Asheretz, which is Shoreitz, Kol Mokum Shu Shoreitz. Asheretz contaminates wherever it may be, okay? Wherever it may be, it contaminates, right? It says like this. Al chaksot tam shavsechem b'chol asheretz hashoreitz lo sitamu bohem v'nit mesabam. You should not be contaminated with them, and you will become contaminated. So it says in the pasuk, uksiv al oritz. Sheretz hashoreitz al oritz. What's al oritz? Oritz means it's on the ground, on the land. Hakeitzat. Hakeit. What does that mean? Vade mago mitame, sovig mago, tor. Right. If you touch it, you tell me. If you're not, you don't touch it. Not to, right? If it's if it's moving. Betuma kol mokshu bein b'mayim bein b'karka tomei bein sofeg 
Bosovic Noga, meaning if the tuma is in the water or wherever it may be, you touch it, you tell me. But if it's not, of course it says, you should not contaminate yourself. Reb Shimon, my timer, what does Reb Shimon differentiate between when it's the clay or on the ground? Omar Rulo Ksiv, Ach Mayon, Uksiv Yitmo. It says, even regarding Mayon, it says, Ach Yitmo. How can I? says, if, if you're contaminated, you go into a Mayon, it purifies you, right? But then it says, Yitmo. So the question is, are you, does it purify you, Yitmo? Yitmo, Hoketa, Tsofo, Bekelum Tome. That if it's in a vessel, and there's a question, to touch the vessel or not, right? Well, you put your hand in the vessel, and the question, did you, we'll see what. Then, then the the the, the cleaves tummy, because it says akvin mikve mayim. If the mikve mayim, it's in the mikve mayim, which is in the ground. It's a wellspring. It's no, then it, it's not metal. No, if you're putting your hand in. It's no, we're talking about no. It's a kli. We're differentiating the kli, and it, it's in a lake. So okay, it's a sofik elam tummy bekarkator. It's a sofik in a kli. The cleaves tummy, but it's in, in the ground. The ground that it's tummy. That, Makes no difference. <coughs> that's, that's called the ground. It's moving in the ground. It's, it's not stationary on the ground. Ton Rabbonon. Kol anitolin. Kol anitolin van nigron sveikon tome. Yeah. Anything which is which is moved or dragged and the question as the person you tome meishu munochen. Because it's munochen. Now, it's interesting. Over here, you have cetosis over here. Adam omed b'mayim b'chaver hoi mishal shel sheret sovig noga bo adam omed b'mayim. On the grom shel chaver ho gorer sherets al pnei amayim sovig noga sveiko tome meishen kumunochen. Kevin adam tevis bo in kadin tumet tzofa. Hear this? We're saying like this: the person's holding onto sherets, he's moving it, because the move person himself is considered stationary. Person is called stationary. Water is not stationary. Yes. If it's free floating, did you touch it or not? Then we discuss. You, tore it, you go with your, your Torah. But if a person's holding it, then you tell me. Right? So if a man is moving tuma through water and you're in the water, and the subject did he touch you or did he touch you, you tell me. You tell me. That's called it. Tolian, Vanigroi, and Sveikon Tome. Why? And they say Munochen. If a person's touching it, holding it, it's Tome. Han is rocking. What about if somebody threw it? So nobody's holding it. It's in flight. Let's say somebody passes, somebody throws a sheretz. And this court did a touch while it was in flight, right? Sveikon tohor. Right? Then you, it's suffix of tohor. You tohor. Tohor the chazoka. Because we just said, when we talk about sheretz, if it's munochim, if it's on the ground, did you come in contact with it now? What's the aloha? Your tummy. Your tummy. If it's not moving. If it's not moving, your tummy. Wait a second. So therefore, we said if it's floating on the water, that's called moving. That's moving. Right. What about the person's holding it in his hand and he's moving it? No, it's a suffix if you touch it. You go the chazaka. If you have water, f uh, something floating on the water, a sheretz. We don't know. So you have a chazaka. You have resumed status before. You still tore, right? Because it's, it's moving. What about if the person's holding it? I moved it through the water. So that means it's being held by a person. The person's stationary. Right? It's not free free floating. And now, wh while he moved it, there's a question, did he, did he touch you? Did he touch the person in the water? Somebody was in the water, and I moved a, share it, a dead share through the water. And you tell me. Because that's not called floating. Because somebody's holding it. Holding it means that's munochit. Okay? What, but what about if you throw it? That's a, it's a movement. When it's a movement, then you go after Chazoka. And this, did the sheriffs touch you? Did it not touch you? You, you go after Chazoka. Okay? Chutz min Ksayis Hames. What about a person? Uh, Ksayis Hames. God forbid a person was killed and the body parts flew in every direction. And there's a question where you hit with a body part. Right? Or the body part that went over you. Or went beneath you. So we're talking, there's too much oil. Right? Right? Mess is metame oil. It's not only in terms of coming <coughs> contact. Right. Right? You bend over a grave or over the ksayis of a mess. The tumor goes up. Right. You contaminate it. Ksayis min hametz v'amayel al pnei tumor. Chol dover she metame melmal kilmat. We'll see. Lasu yizov v'zover. If you're on top of a zover, under a zover. So you're tome. You're tome. 
Borami Barchoma, Mespikli. Now, an interesting case. Mespikli, Ukli Tzof Al Gabi Al Pine Amayim. You have Mes in a Kli. One second. So, we said earlier, if Tuma is not stationary, what's the halacha? Wait a second. If it's stationary, it's Metame. If it's not stationary, then we go after, we say Chazoka. One second. So, Viatosa says, Vega, Boy Rami Barchoma, here. We want to know, mespically, uklitzof up neamayim, and now the vessel is floating. No, 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 it doesn't make sense. Mespically, uklitzof up neamayim. Mao, bosa kli asli, bosa, bosa musa asli. Let's, the toast explains. Vodnoch. You go after the Kli, or Bosa Kli as Nino, or Dil or Bosa Mai as Nino, or Lonoch. If it's a question, it's moving, right? So then you go after Chazoka. You go after Chazoka. But if it's, you say it's not moving, you look at it versus the Kli. The Kli is moving, but the mess is in the Kli, yeah. so that's called, it's Munach. But you had a question. Mess be Kli, Kli Tzav HaPnei Right? The case in the mission that says a person went into a mikvah and there was a mess floating on the water. Mm-hmm. The other suffix was that he bent over it. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the the maga. It wasn't touching. Touching, so good. So therefore he's body tummy. Because Sophie Tumma should say Yochta. But if it's question touching, because when it comes to Tuma, it has to be stationary. Right. So when you look at the mess in the Kli, you have a mess in the Kli, so versus the Kli, right. it's stationary. Right. But the Kli is moving. So you look at the, 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 what's in the Kli, if you have a, a, a vessel on the ground, right. and you have something in the vessel, right. whether it's the Kli or the vessel, everything's stationary. Right. So then what are you? You got it, then you tell me. Tell me that's what I'm Why? Because everything's stationary. Right. But if I look at the vessel as the mess, even though it's the clee, but since the clee is moving, you look at the mess being moving. Or do I say, no, these are the clee, the chazaisim and the mess is stationary. Right? It's not moving in the clee. So is the body like the clee or the or Not the body. There's no body. Chazais. You have a chazais of mess. So, so we say, does he contaminate the... Uh, so to speak, no, 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 no. Talking about a case of a sofa. You touch it, whether it's moving or not. You touch it, you tell me. So if you touch the boat, the not the boat, not the boat. Let, let, I don't want to hear what you have to say. I want to tell you what no, the Gemara is saying. Floating on the surface, the container. Wait. So what's the container? I know. You want to listen a minute? Okay. Okay. You have a kzayis that's in a container. In a container. Right. Now he's a sofa. Did he touch that? Did he touch that or did he not touch that? First of all, you touch it inside. Well, let it, it's, let it's in the clean. You touch it inside. I'm something you touch inside, you should not touch inside. If, it, if the mess, you see it is floating, it's a sophic, something that floats the tumor, you're not telling. Of course, you have a chazoka. It has to be stationary. So if you look at the mess vis a vis the clean, vis a vis the clean, the mess is stationary. If you look at the mess vis-a-vis the whole situation, it's moving. So that's how question. Do you look at it vis-a-vis its location or vis-a-vis the outer location? That's the question. Is that what you were saying? Yes. Okay. So we're saying the same thing. So that's the question. Okay. What about mesa gabi sheretz? Now what about if you have a, a sheretz? You have a rodent and on top of the rodent is a xayas of the, of the mess. Okay? And there's a suffix that he touched the mess. Cave and I tumas era by tumas shiva come out the mochto tuma bekli damio. Yeah, very interesting. Normally you have a principle like nim benine no chotzeis. You see, the, the reason why we're considering the mess in the kli because these are the kli stationary. Okay? What about if you have a rodent floating on the water? Let's say you have a mess that's uh, three inches in thickness. Right? 
So I, you look at it as one entity. Why do you look at it as one entity? Because it is one entity. I don't say, well, it's, it's stationary because there's enough. There's excise from midpoint upward. So you say, well, maybe it's attached to the bottom. The bottom is floating. You know, you see it as one entity. So let's say I have a Xayis and a mess on top of the Sheritz. Do I look at it as one entity or two entities? If you look at it as two entities, why? So you have the mess on top of the what? On top of the Sheritz, it's like on the cleat. Right. Or do I say since they're both sources of Tuma, right. you see it as one entity, so the, the whole thing is floating. Right. You had a question? Again, in the vessel, you hear the qu wh what the question is. Since these are the, the vessel, it's stationary in the vessel. What's floating? The vessel's floating. But it, inside the vessel, it's stationary. So let's say you have a Xi spin mess, let's say, on a, on a dead rodent. Vis-a-vis -vis the rodent, the mess is not moving. The rodent is moving, and because the mess is on the rodent, that's why it's moving. So the rodent would be like the vessel. Correct? There's no vessel. It's on the water. The rodent's on the, on the water. And there's a size of the mess on top of the rodent. Okay? So do I look at the rodent as the, a, a vessel? Meaning it's not because vis-a-vis -vis the rodent, the Xayas mess is, is on the rodent. It's fixed. Or, or, do we say, or do we say that since they're both objects of Tuma, we see it as one entity and we look at it all as floating. Even the mess is floating. Before I deal with the vessel, the vessel is a vessel, the mess is a mess. So therefore, there's two entities. So there's no question, vis-a-vis -vis the vessel, it's contained in the vessel. But over here, I'll say, since the both source of tuma, I even look at the upper part as if it's touching the water. Or if I say no, because it's a different type of tuma. Sheretz is only tuma seret. You touch the sheretz, you go to the mikveh, you, you, you're purified by nighttime. Mess, it's tuma shiva, seven days, you need a duma. So maybe therefore, since it's a different entity, therefore, maybe you look at the sheretz like an interruption between the water and the, and the mess. That's the Gemara's question. Again, let's read it inside. Mesa gabi sheretz. Mal kevenai tumas erevai tumas shivo kamanda mach to tumi bekli dami. You look at the tumor as if it's contained within a kli. It's not floating. It's the same question as we took us before by the kli. O dilma tumas smichti. No, it's a thick tumor. It's one, since they're both source of contamination, you look at it as one entity, so off the whole thing is floating. If you can say, because since the two types of tumor, you look at the sheretz as what? As a different degree of <coughs> contamination. Okay. Vitome. Vitome. Sheretz agabi nevela. Sheretz al gabi nevela vela tzofa. Now we have an interesting. Tuma sheretz, tuma stavela, if you touch it, what happens? You go to the mikveh by nighttime, you're, you're, you're pure. So here we're talking about, even though they're both source of tuma, but the degree of tuma is the identical source. So do I look at it as one entity? We'll see, but there's a difference. We'll see. Came in the tavayu tuma serev, enon, tuma, semichti. It's like one entity, therefore the whole thing's floating. You got it? Odilma Haikazais Vikes Kadasha. Here. How much you need to be contaminated with let's say with the carcass of an animal? You have to have a gazayas. Anything less than gazayas, you're not contaminated. A sheretz, if it's as small as a lentil, the flesh, it contaminates. So there's a difference. So even though the degree of tum is the same degree, but since the volume is a different volume, you look at it as a different entity, so I'll say that the mess is not actually floating on the water. I look at the sheretz as, as the equivalent of the vessel. And therefore, if you have a suffix, you're going to be tummy. Right? Because we say if it's stationary, you're tummy. Sheretz agabi sheretz ma. What about if you have one sheretz, if you have two shrots in it? Right? Two rodents, one on top of the other. Havari chachiro, they're both a chadasha, right? They both contaminate if it's the size of a lentil. Odilma caved the miskimi at the Lord. We say, no, since it's not one entity, well, not one entity, so therefore it's, it's called it's stationary. Do we say, since they're identical, but they're two parts, you look at it as one entity? Or do we say, no, since factually there are two parts, the upper part is stationary on, 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 what, it's, on it, what it's resting on? 
Vim to the silver shares of Rabbi Sheretz, came the Miski Bad Dodi, command the Mount Chabakli Domi, and therefore you're definitely Tome, because that's called stationary. Mm-hmm. Stationary, you got it? Sheretz Agabi Nevelo, Shini Muchamau. What about if you have liqu- liquefied Nevelo? It's not, it's not physical, it's not a substance. No, no, it's like water, yeah. it's liquefied, it's been pureed. So if it's pureed, maybe it's that, that's like already like water. It's, that it gives a greater relevance to the water. The cable dini mucha have you laid mashke? It's a mashke, and therefore you see it as what it's sitting in the water. The upper part is in the water. It's odilma hay uchlu, even though it's liquefied, so even though when it's in its substance, it's pureed. Mm-hmm. But what's its status in the halacha? It's, it's called ochel. If you have a, let's say you take a, a, a you take a kzayis of what's it called? It? Of of nevela, you liquefy it, you puree it. How much of that liquefied stuff is needed to become tummy? Only a kazayas. So even though in its physicality it's been liquefied, right. you know, still don't you see it, you don't see it as water. Water, you have to have a revius. Okay. So true. since it retains the the, 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 the status of, of, of a physical entity, right. uh-huh. so maybe you don't look at it as water. Okay. You never become tummy. Tumas Eret. And if you can say it's ochel, so therefore the liquefaction of it means nothing, and therefore you tell me, Sheretz al Gavi Shikva Zeramau, semen contaminates. You got it? You have a Sheretz on semen. So semen is what? So therefore it's liquid. Vimtim Slova Kev Dim Sakra Havale Ki Uchlo, Sheretz al Gavi Bechatus. No, the uchel is like ochel because it, yeah. it, it, it has a thickness to it, okay. sperm. Right. So therefore, it's considered stationary. It's like the oh. kli. Sheretz agabi mechatos. What about if you have made for aduma? It's already mixed with the, with the ash. So if you mix ash into the water, it ha- already has a certain uh, what thickness to it. Okay. okay, it has a viscosity to it. Right. Umechatos sofen agabi maimau lo yadinon. It's all left unresolved. Teiku. Okay, gotta wait for Eliyahu another. To take the Tishbi third Kushis Kushis Rabbi. Soon. Okay, listen to the story. We had earlier that if you have Kevratom, remember what Kevratom is? Howard, you know the expert, Kev- Kevratom. Okay, I've mentioned before quite a few times. If you had, let's say, a corpse, let's say, fell into a hole was buried over. Right. Nobody ever knew he was ever buried there. Right. Okay. A person fell into a into something yeah. and he was covered by, by gravel, by stones, by okay. sand. And a nausea a person was Pesach walked over that location. Right. Even though there's a corpse there, he's not contaminated. Not contaminated. L- you find out later. After he pe- he's not contaminated in that case earlier. You have somebody covers the whole width yeah, of a yeah. road. But nobody ever knew that there was a corpse buried under there. Nobody in the world knows it. And later it's discovered there's a corpse under that road. Anybody passed over that road in regard to Nazir or Pesach, you could eat the carbon Pesach. In terms of Nazir, it does, retroactively his Nazir is not canceled. He's not contaminated. But if he's a Kohen, he's not permitted to eat Shum. Because the Alochem of Shemisinai of Tumas HaTom, Tum means the depths, the depths, only is only regarding Nazir and Karm Pesach. Halacha Lub Shem Sinai. Okay? Good. Om Nazir v'osah Pesach sh'holchu b'kever atom. V'shvi sh'elohim. The seventh day when you're going to get the second sprinkling. Tahori. My time. What's the reason? The lo'alimu tumas atom l'mistar. Because the tumas atom is not strong enough to cancel the counting. It's being we found out afterwards. Mm-hmm. Mosef Robo, Robo asked a question. Yoridly told me Tumas Hames. <coughs> we had early in the mission a person goes into a cave to contaminate himself with Tumas Hames. Tomei. Right? See, he's Tomei. And now, Tumas Hames, Tomei. Cheskus Tomei, Tomei. Cheskus Tor, Tor. Here? If a person was Tor already and went in, he's Tor. But if he's Tomei, he's Tomei. Omalei. He says, Modina loch binozi shmuchusi taglachas. We'll see. By nozi, he says, I agree because he has to cut his hair. Right? He, he has to yet cut his hair. 
But he says, I agree by Korban Pesach, because there he's not missing anything. Let's say on the seventh day, a person's tummy gets a sprinkling on the third and seventh day. What's the law? You just have to wait for the next day to bring the Korban Pesach. Mm -hmm. Right? He can't bring it right the next day. Of Amalai Abayi, Sir Abayi says to Rova of Amuchuser, Herb Shemesh. But actually, just like the Nozir needs Haglachas, and that's the reason why he cancels it, right? Mm -hmm. He has to start over, say, here also. When he's contaminated on the seventh day, he can't bring the corn pestle on the seventh day. It's only on the eighth day. Right. You hear this? The sun comes naturally. In terms of cutting, you have to do an overt act of cutting. So since he hasn't yet cut his hair, therefore, since he's in the middle of like still counting, so he's canceled out. Okay? And the verse of even Abai, he accepted. Rubber's answer, we find he retracted. He retracted. Meaning he accepted the answer of what? Erev Shemesh. No, 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 no. No, for Korban Pesach it does not. No. We're holding that Korban Pesach. He's Vap Abay Hodabe. Vitanya. Yomalos. Tobi. Tochmalos lo Tobi. Now, speaking of an interesting case, listen to the case. A woman, the Torah says, a woman gives birth to a, a female. Right? What's the aloha? So for, uh, what's it called? It? For six and six, 60, for 14 days she's contaminated, right? And for 66 days she's Torah. Okay? Let's say she conceives, so the husband's forbidden to have relations with her after, after 14 days, right? Let's say she becomes pregnant during that period of time. Okay? What so what happens on, on day 81? She has to bring the korban. Right? A Yoleda says bring the korban. Until the 81st day, she cannot bring the korban. Right? The Torah says a woman gives birth, she has to bring the korban. When does she bring the korban? On the 81st day. Right? So it's, eight, so it's 81. Let's say she becomes pregnant. And let's say she would miscarry. During that that period of time, how many carbonos does she bring afterwards? She brings one. She brings one. We'll cover both because it's during that pe she hasn't finished counting those days. Okay. One second. The Tanya Yomalos Tovi Tochumlos Lo Tovi. Yeah. If it's on the eighty. 80th day or 81st day at night. Let's say she miscarries the 81st at night. Right? Then the halach is she has to bring a new carbon. Because why? Because during, because this happened, she miscarried. The child was, was she gave birth to the new child, which is the miscarriage, but it was, no, so she has to bring a separate carbon. Right? Tovi. Let's say she miscarried during the 80 day period. Lo Tovi. She doesn't bring another carbon. Maybe she doesn't bring a korban on the leido, which takes place within the 80 days, but she'll bring on a giving birth after the 80 days. He taught, he taught there Mishneim. Tabaloma, Belos, he made Torah beyond Los Tovi. Tochmelos Lo Tovi. One second. So it says over here, let's see those closest. Just two seconds. He says something phenomenal, like this. She gave birth, look, she, she gave birth, let's say, on day 64, right? She gave birth on day 64. So now, when you come to, so we already linked the second birth to the first birth. So regarding the second birth, you're still within 66 days. So you have another 14, another. Mm -hmm. Let's say now she miscarries again 
within 80 of the second, but it's beyond 80 of the first. How many carbonos do you bring? You bring one. Why? Because since the second one is linked to the middle, and the middle is linked to the first, so therefore one's enough for all three. But you would think, that's what the Pasuk tells me, you would think since the last birth was not within the time period of birth, she should bring two carbonos. The answer is, but since it's within the period of the second, and the second one is linked to the first, therefore you see it as one continuous time. You follow me on me? Okay, very simple. A, a woman gives, Torah says, on day 81 you bring the carbon. She, she has a miscarriage yeah. on day 64. She gives birth on 64, the second one, miscarriage. So it's considered a birth. So she has to bring a, does she have to bring a separate carbon? The answer no. Because since it was within the 80 day period of first, one carbon will come first. Okay? Let's say she, she didn't bring the carbon on day 81. And now she's pregnant. She's pregnant again. And she miscarries, let's say, three with, within the period of time that it's considered a birth. It's within 80 days of the second birth, not within 80 days of the first birth. You following? Now you got it. Okay, good. So now, how many carbonos do you bring? You have to bring since the third birth or miscarriage was not within the time period of the first. You have to bring two. One for the second, two for the third, and one for the first two. Or do we say that since the third was within the time period, of the second, and the second is linked to the first, we see it as they're all three are linked, you bring one carbon covers all of them. Without the Pasuk, I'd say you have to bring two. The Pasuk tells me, though, that since if they're all linked, the second, the third is within the second, and the second is linked to the first, you bring one. One for all of them. Okay, let's see if we can inside now. Yom los tavi tokum los lo tavi. Yom los tavi aleidush lefnei melos, alo tavi aleidush lachum los. Maybe you would say, if it's within the time period, you bring one carbon. It's after time, bring two. Right? But the one that happened after the 80 day period, you bring another carbon. No, that since factually it's within the time period of the second one, you only bring one, you don't bring two. Yeah? Because they overlap. Although the third is not connected to the first, first but, but since the second, second is connected, the second, exactly, right, right, right. So the question is, Omar um, Kamosh. But the question is, let's say she would have brought the, car she could have brought a carbon after what's his name? After the first. Okay. After after the second, she could have brought it, okay. right? She just didn't. She says, Shani Hocha, the Bechasher of carbon. So he said, you know why? Because since factually the carbon was not brought that cold, you're still within the time period. Okay. Right? So if you're still within the time period, so it's like you, you, didn't, clo you didn't close the deal. You didn't close it. Good. He says, Hosam Nami. He says, so what about Herb Shemesh? So whatever we said earlier, if you have seven days, right? Hey, Hosam. Shimshim Mel Arba. When you come contaminated on the seventh day, what's only missing? Herb Shemesh. Sabai Yenta over there. Shit, it, that'll happen by naturally. Right. Nothing has to be done. Yeah, now, there's an interesting halacha. If a person is buried in a location, intentionally buried there, not temporary buried, what's that halacha? You're not permitted to, to exhume the body to put it somewhere else. It's called meskon in the problem. Wherever a person is buried, you're supposed to leave him there. What about a person was killed <coughs> and he fell into a pit or they just threw him in there? Right? And he was just thrown in there, so that temporary, you, you could zoom in. 
Okay? Now, Hamotzi Mesbetchilo, Mushka Kedarko. You find, you come upon, you're digging in a field, and you find a body buried normally. So since you're not aware it's a cemetery, you can presume it was buried there temporarily. It wasn't buried there. People had nowhere else to put the person. They put him there. But it's not meant to be that he's put there permanently. Okay? So therefore, the halach is you, when you take the body out, you have to take it together, we'll see, with, with three <coughs> fochim into the ground. You take the body out, and you have to scrape off three, 12 inches of, of dirt. Why? So we'll see later, because we say when a person dies, there's certain fluids, blood and fluids that come out of the body, mm -hmm. and those fluids intermingle with 12 inches of earth. So you have to scrape that out, and you take that with the body, and you bury it wherever you're going to bury the body. That's considered part of the remains of the body. You bury it somewhere else. No, no, just underneath. Underneath, okay? What about Shnayim? What about if you find two bodies? Notlon, again, best for Sosa. Again, you're permitted to take it out. Because we say they will put it. What about, but they're buried in a normal way. They're fully extended, horizontally. Because we have a case later where if you find the body, the body was, let's say, when the person was crucified, was cut up. When the person was, was in the grave, he had his head between his, his knees. Yeah. Meaning, in, in different postures, which mm -hmm. a person doesn't bury this way. So it's clear the person was just thrown in there or fell in there. Mm -hmm. Then that's, that's not called a cemetery. Mm -hmm. But over here, you find, we're talking about you find three people buried as a personal. Mm -hmm. You can presume mm -hmm. this was originally a cemetery. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're not permitted to exhume the bodies. You're not permitted to exhume the bodies. Much in yesh being Dalin Amos, Achimon, if between one grave and the other, it's between four and eight Amos, Hareza Shkunas Koros. That's considered a location of a cemetery, because that's the way they buried people. The person was buried horizontally, and he what? And there's between four and eight Amos from grave to grave, okay? That's, that's called Shkunas Koros. It's, the, it's, the, it's a neighborhood, it's, it's called an area of, of a cemetery. Bode came in now, now went, how far? So with that location, is the same. you can't exhume the bodies. Now, when you count out, how far further out do you have to go to check if there are more bodies? Bo they came in, Allah and Esrim Amos. Now you have to check 20 Amos beyond. If you find within 20 Amos another, Moto Echad Besofar Bo Imam, Esrim Amos. You located another body within 20 Amos. Although we said, when you normally bury people, there's four to eight between body. You found one, you have to check up to 20. And you found one. Both came in Allah and Esrim Amos. You have to go check even further. Another 20 Amos. Shurgalayim Ludov, Shilutchilo, Motso. Stop. Stop. You, you, of course, the Ragalayim Ludov, because there's already circumstantial evidence, because you already know this, it was established as a graveyard in the center. People buried within a, 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 a radius of 20 Amos, people are buried within the radius of what? Of the graveyard. Shilutchilo, Motso. Not less to Vosso, because but if it would be Tchilomotso, meaning he, the person was not meant to be buried there, when you take the body out, you take it together with the earth underneath the body. Okay? Omer Av Yudo, Motso, it says you find, it says, right, you found. Vega. It says in the Mishnah, you find three, three graves three bodies within 48 amos of one another, what's the aloha? You say it's a graveyard. Motza prat lahorug. Right? That means the person was indicated he was murdered. So he was murdered and thrown in there. Right? Gav, it says you find three, he's what, what does it say in the b'raisa? Vega, vega, vega. Motzi betchilo mushkav, kedarko. He's lying as you normally bury a person. Right? Mushkav, Prat, where is it? Prat, Mushkav, Prat, Leoshev, Kedarko. Person sitting up. Person doesn't, you don't bury a person sitting up. Leoshev, Kedarko, Prat, Leoshev, Munach, Ben Yachosev. What about you find him? His head is between his knees. That means he was just thrown in there. He was murdered, thrown in there. Tani Yudha Barchanino, Mez Shechose, Elot Fusa. What about you have a mess, you find a mess in the grave. We said earlier, when you zoom the body, when you're allowed to, you take the body and you take three inches, three, 12 inches of the 
dirt underneath. What about if the mess <coughs> is found not fully intact? Is a limb missing? So the halacha is a lutfusa because the halacha is you have to take what's underneath. That's halacha mishum sinai. So if the body is lacking, you don't take it. Also, if you find various bodies buried next to one another, even though they're buried normally, but if you, if you, unless you know for a fact they were buried intentionally there, you don't assume that what this is a graveyard. Why not? Because we say maybe it's a goy. Maybe they were goyim. Because factually they're Jews. I mean, why not? Mega. When the Gemara says, uh, how does he explain it? Chol hani my time of army. I said, Horo, why do we say that? Because we don't bury that way. We don't bury sitting up that I understand. So what do we say? No, they will go. But well, what was the question? My time alone. What's the question? My Chol hani my time alone. Hmm. Left it. They left it. Of course, it's a grave. It's not a question. It's a grave. We're talking about exhuming. They left it. Left it. They put this this one monument on it. That's it. It's a mass grave. It was a mass grave. What does he say there? Well, I don't understand the question. What's going my time alone? What's what's my time alone? Why isn't it sh the other ones? I understand why it's not not a graveyard. You're allowed to exhum it. The reason why you're allowed to exhum it because they're going. That's why you're allowed to exhum it. That I got it. There you go. Why is the question? Why is the question? No, that's, that's next tomorrow coming up. That's next tomorrow. That's tomorrow. You find you have two bodies. They buried the head of one is by the feet of the other. One is definitely was buried there intentionally. The other two, they happen to be just found there. Were originally there one. Oshnaim tchilo, oshnaim yiduim, ain't lem tuus and ain't shulim space akvoro. You know what the story is? You have a person. You know, two people were were buried there, and then you find the third. You find the third. So when you find the third, meaning he wasn't buried there intentionally, that's not shulim space akvoro. You know for a fact one was put there temporarily. Okay. So then, even though you have three people buried there, that's not a graveyard. Yeah. It's only when three people were put there permanently to be the firm, that's when it takes on the status of a graveyard. Okay? Maisa Rabbi Sheva, Sheboda Kamotsu Shnaim Yuduin, here, Vechot Chilo. He found two bodies that originally were buried there intentionally. Yuduin means they were buried there intentionally. And one was Chilo. They had to bury them temporarily. Ubikesh Lasso Shkunis Kvoros. And he wanted to declare it as what is a cemetery. So it takes on all the stringencies. Mm -hmm. Omla Reb Kiva, so Reb Kiva disagrees with him, to Reb Yusheva, he says, Kol she yogata lori yogata. All the trouble he's gone through to establish as a cemetery, it's, it's worthless. You know, let's say he built a wall, all that, it's worthless, because it's not a cemetery. Lo amrish chuz kvars elo ligimel yuduin. Only if three people were buried there intentionally to remain there. Right? O shloshi tchila. I don't know what the shloshi tchila means. 
No, she chilo. It's not a cemetery. It's not a cemetery. She chilo. She's chilo. So you're doing. You're doing. You do means you, you would know. Tchila means it, was, it first came upon it. Hello, Gimel, you don't. Oh, Gimel, Shemot, Tchila, Shlo, you do in Kodem, Rehain. Oh, the Gimir, Abu Bido, Yersalo. Oh, it has to do with the Gears here. Kodem, Rehain. If you find three, well, you didn't know they were buried there. So we say that's the case. You came upon three graves, and they were buried normally the way Jews bury. That's a cemetery. Good. If you had no three people were buried there intentionally, also it's a, gra- it's a graveyard. Yeah. Either way, it's a graveyard. Right. Right. What about two you know, and then you find the third? Right. Then we say no. Right. We say the third one may have been put there temporarily. Right. Okay. Further. No, because we said, of course, you have to count down 20 amos to look, search for other graves. Also, regarding exhuming, are you permitted to exhume the bodies? If they were put there intentionally, you're not permitted to exhume them. No, two things. Firstly, you're not permitted to exhume it. If a person was buried there for remainder, you're not permitted to exhume the body. Secondly, you also have to look 20 amos. The radius of this area has to be searched that you don't find any other grave. And if you find another grave, you have to look at it go beyond another 20 hours, a radius of another 20 hours. Because since it was already established as a graveyard. No, 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 no. Yeah. Note one, this, it says when you take the body out, you take it with the dirt underneath. Hechidamitfusa, right? Meaning, from where do we know Tfusa? How do we know you're supposed to take the earth underneath the body? Amri Bidam Akrov, the Sasani Mitzrayim. Yaakov said to Yosef, when you take it, Uno Sasani Mi Mitzrayim. You say, Uno Sasani, what do you mean? You take me Mi Mitzrayim? Tol Imi. Take, when you take me, take some of Egypt with me. You have the way it's interpreting it. That's Uno Sasani Mitzrayim. One more second, can I go? The Afar Mitzrayim told Imi. Okay? So the Marsa, and how much do you take? Right? The Kamashir, Tfusa, Pirish, Rebelezer, Notel, Ofet Yichuach. Firstly, you take any loose dirt under the body. You, you take that. The Chofet Bipsula Gimlet's Vos. Any earth under the body, take that immediately. And into virgin soil, Gimelet's both, and that's what, three, three inches. Because we say that the blood and the fluids absorbed into the ground, three inches. Three inches, three inches. So whatever is loose, plus whatever is solid, you, you dig in three inches and, and take that all out. It's wide, but what is it? that is his me. Right. He you says, he says, I don't want to be buried. Bim it. Take a look. He says, he brings from the back of Nura. Let's see what he says. Bury me with my others. What do you have to discuss Egypt altogether? Right. So the Mimitzram comes to teach me, take of Egypt. That you take some of the earth yeah. under me. Because yeah. otherwise the Mimitzram is what is superfluous. If he tells me where he wants to be buried, he's in Egypt now. Doesn't yeah. mean that means he's being taken out of Egypt. Right. So what do you have to say, Mimitzrayim? Right? What do you have to say from yeah. Egypt? Means to take some of the earth with me. No, it's not 12 inches. I, say. It's, I, I, I thought it's three spoken. Three it's, it's yeah, yeah. is an inch. Three inches. 
Mesve. But Kamashir Tfuso, we learned the Brisa. What is the Shir Tfuso? Pirish, Rebbe Reb Reb Tzodik, Notel, Zakismin, you take the, you have twigs, Vesakasosos, Vizorik Esavadon, you take that, but what, what definitely is not part of it, you throw away. Menechas Esveikos, Vashem et Starf, Lerov Binyanu Shomes, Rov of Tzos, we have Lomoli Tarkiv, Rekifu, Niyomak Yaitano, Okay, we'll stop here.